Thank you. Yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm Simon. I work at Vassell, and I'm a Svelte maintainer, which is a JavaScript framework like React or Vue or Solid. And today, I'm going to talk about Svelte 5, the new APIs it introduces, and how they make your life as a Svelte developer easier. Svelte 3 was a big step forward. It introduced a compiler-centric way of thinking about reactivity, and it's been a huge success. We've come from around 50,000 NPM downloads per week in 2019 to about a million today. The maintainer team has grown, and three of us are even paid by Vassell to work on it full time now, and the community is thriving. We're very thankful for where we are today. With this confidence into the future, it was time to rethink reactivity again. We wanted to fix some fundamental issues, remove limitations of the current system, but keep the good parts, keep the Svelte spirit alive. And the result of this is Svelte 5, the new APIs it brings. So let's look how this turns out to be. We start with a simple counter component, as everybody does. It has a count variable, which we double and then show in the button. And we also have a side effect that alerts you when the count gets too high. The code you see right now is still using the current Svelte 4 syntax. So let's convert it to Runes, our new API for expressing reactivity in Svelte. First, we'll replace the export let syntax, which denotes a component property. And we'll use the $props rune for that, from which you can then structure all your component properties you want to define. In general, runes look like functions starting with the dollar sign, but they're not actually functions. They are more like compiler instructions. In that sense, they have similarities to the dynamic import statement uh, in JavaScript, and they have semantic restrictions of where and how they can be used. Next up, we have our state declaration, which is right now let count equals initial. Um, in Svelte 4, variable declarations at the top are um, top level of a component are reactive, but only there, so it's a bit of implicit knowledge. In Svelte 5, we make things more explicit, so you wrap the initializer in the dollar state rule. The result is still the initializer itself, so as far as TypeScript concerned, this is basically the identity function, but Svelte now knows, oh, this is a reactive var variable, so I should check whenever it updates. We do something similar for the derived value, the double equals count times two with a dollar colon in front. And what we do is we use the dollar derived rule. And this tells the compiler that everything inside the der derivation that depends on other reactive values should be tracked. And so whenever count changes, the derived rule will ensure that this computation reruns and double gets the new current value. Finally, we have a side effect. In Svelte 5, we can use this dollar colon syntax for that, so they look the same as um, derivations in that sense. In Svelte 5, we can use the new dollar effect rune to create side effects. The rest stays the same. The resulting code may feel a tiny bit more boilerplate at first, but it's more explicit and easier to read, and let's face it, we read far more code than we write. Derivations are now clearly visible as such and separate from side effects. Previously, that was all a bit mixed inside the dollar colon statements. And if you're new to Svelte, the rune names tell you what they do much better and you know much more quickly what's going on on the code compared, yes, okay. compared to uh, what we had before. Also note how we didn't have to change anything with regards to reading or writing to the variables. It's still the same elegant, bare bones, reassign the variable, and Svelte figures it out for you, feeling you know and love from Svelte. Most importantly, this new API allows us to keep using Svelte's reactivity beyond the top level of components. So this wasn't just possible before. Previously, if we wanted to extract this logic into a reusable function, we had to refactor everything to using stores, which is a cumbersome, tedious undertaking. And you end up with much more imperative code compared to what you have now. With Svelte 5, we can now use the same reactive primitives everywhere, inside functions, outside of Svelte components, etc. So in this case, all we have to do is take this code and wrap it into a function. The code I highlighted stays exactly the same. 
We're returning getters for count and double to keep the reactivity across boundaries. And then we can use the returned object in the template. This is a huge step forward for Svelte as it allows us to keep the reactivity model consistent across the entire application. We're also overhauling how events work in Svelte 5. In Svelte 4, you use the on colon syntax to listen to DOM events. In Svelte 5, we're using event attributes instead, which practically speaking means just remove the colon. This may seem like a tiny change, but it has big implications. Because events are just like attributes now, we can also treat component events as callback properties. You could have done this already, but Svelte incentivized you instead to use the somewhat clunky create event dispatcher API to have visual similarity with how you listen to DOM events. In Svelte 5, we instead recommend you to just pass functions as properties, callback properties, and call them directly. If you use JSX-based frameworks, this is old news for you. <laughs> but yeah, we learn from each other. What this also means is that because events are attributes now, we can also spread them onto the elements. And this is a big step forward for Svelte because previously you had to forward each event separately using the on colon syntax. So if you wanted to forward events from the button, you had to do like on click, on colon, key down, on colon, and so on and so on. Now you can just spread them along and the user can decide what he needs. You have more flexibility power by that, and this especially is useful for component libraries. All the while, you having to learn less concepts because events are just properties now, or attributes. The last big addition to Svelte 5 is the new Snippets API. Snippets allow you to define template sections of a component that can be reused and then re-render them wherever you want. They're a bit like the little brother of full-blown Svelte components. In this example, we have an if block with some repetitive code in both branches, and we can extract this code into a snippet and then render it in both. And this looks like this. So we have first our snippet, hashtag snippet, snippet name, open brace, possibly some arguments, closing brace, a bit like a function definition. And then we have the markup, which should be rendered. And then to render that, we're using the add render tag, and then just reference the snippet and invoke it like a function, so to speak. And we can do the same here again. This makes the code more readable and maintainable, and it also reduces the risk of bugs due to copy pasting. Most importantly, snippets also serve as a replacement for slots. To recap, slots allow you to pass visual content into a component, and then the component renders it at a specific location. This all works well for simple components, but it gets confusing really fast. In this example, we have a list component that renders a list of to-dos, and we have a slot for the list items and a slot in case the list is empty. We get the to-do item from the slot using and uh, rendering it in the span using this let colon syntax, that's a let directive, and this is where it gets confusing. All the other directives, Svelte passes, uh, in, for all the other directives, Svelte passes values into something, but the let directive gets the value out of something. And it also looks like the to-do variable is available in the empty slot, but that's not really the case, because how could it be that's when there are no items in the list when this is displayed? So it's, it's all a bit confusing. But thankfully, we can replace these slots with snippets. And because snippets are just variables at the end of the day, we can pass them around as properties as well. So instead, the, the list I, uh, now takes three properties, the items, a row property, and an empty property, of which the row and the empty properties are pre property are as expected to be snippets. And as syntax sugar, snippets defined directly within a component are implicitly passed as properties to that component. Resulting code is more readable and easier to read about, all while again reducing the number of concepts to learn. This all comes together in this little playground. Gotta look somewhere else. Uh, here we go. So this is a 
bare bones to do app where everything, the new APIs come together. We have an input component, which we give a placeholder, which appears here. Then there's an on enter callback property, which pushes to the list of to do's, which is state. And then we pass that to our list component along with a row snippet and an empty snippet. The input component is just the on enter callback property and then everything else the user might want to pass to the input. And then we just spread it along, which means properties and events are just handled automatically. We use the on key down event attribute to say, okay, in case someone presses enter, we're gonna invoke the on enter callback property and then set the input back to the empty string. And the list is basically what we've seen uh, just on the, on the previous slide. We have three properties, items, row, empty. And if we say, okay, there are items in the list, then we iterate over them. And for each item, we render the row snippet passing in the item. And if there are no items, then we render the empty snippet in case it's available. And that's basically it. Okay, I fucked it up. <laughs> okay, now I need to get back here, yes. Okay, we believe that Svelte 5 is a big step forward for Svelte. The new APIs allow it to write glitch-free, consistent, reactive code, no matter where you are in your application. You can now stay in Svelte land and don't have to switch to stores when you want to extract logic into functions. The generated code also scales better. It's faster than Svelte 4, and the bundle size doesn't grow as much as it did before. As you've seen by now, we've reduced the number of concepts to, you need to learn to be productive in Svelte. Rune syntactically are just one concept now, unlocking universal reactivity. Instead of the on colon syntax, we now have event attributes, which are just properties. And so we also don't need custom events anymore. We can just use callback properties. And instead of slots, we now have snippets, which are both simpler and more powerful because they unlock new features. As a result, we think that Svelte is even easier to learn and use than before. When you upgrade to Svelte 5, you don't have to rewrite your entire application. We've gone to great lengths to make sure that you can use the current Svelte 4 syntax in Svelte 5. That means that we expect most apps to be able to upgrade with only a few lines of code changed, and then you can incrementally upgrade one component at a time, and you can also mix and match components using the new syntax with components using the old syntax. We invite you to try out Svelte 5 today. You can start a new project with the latest version um, by running npm create Svelte and then selecting the preview, Svelte 5 preview option. You can also play around with it in our preview REPL. There's still some rough edges, especially around animations and transitions, but we're hoping to have a release candidate ready for Svelte Summit on April 27th, so mark that in your calendars. Until then, we're looking forward to your feedback. Thank you.